Today I'm going to go over cohort analysis and how it can be used to analyze customer retention. A cohort is essentially a group of users who share something in common, such as when they landed on your site, when they signed up for a trial, when they started using the trial or engaged in some other way, and lastly when they purchased. In the example I will be showing you, I'll be breaking users into cohorts according to when they purchased a monthly service. The bins or groupings of users will be by month, and then I'll measure user retention based on the date of cancellation. So you want to start by sourcing your data. In this example, I pulled data from MySQL and Mixpanel's API. Once the data is pulled in, you want to set up your cohorts based on the date the user purchased the service. To do that, I just set up an if statement that rounds anything less than the 20th of the month down to the first of that month, while anything greater than the 20th gets rounded up to the next month. So you can see that 11-26-2011 is rounded up to 12-1-2011 and 12-13-2011 is rounded down to 12-1-2011. Now I'll just send this formula all the way down. So once the cohorts are established, you then want to identify how many initial users from each cohort remain each month. You can see this data here for the November 2011 cohort. And to make this data more readable, create a pivot table. So I'm just going to drop this down the rows, and I'll drop this down the values here. And now group the dates by months and years. And there's your data. So 1701 users signed up in November, and of those 1701, 765 remain in December. 748 remain in January, and so forth. So I'll then remove the grand total, since it doesn't make sense in this situation. So next, I can just copy and paste the data out. and then divide all the figures by the November total. And I'll change that to percentage. So at the end of October 2012, 24% of the original users who signed up in November 2011 remain. So then you want to finish that calculation for all the cohorts and then you can build a chart to display the results. I then calculated the average remaining users for all 12 cohorts as well as the average decrease after the first month and there usually is a huge drop-off in users after the first month since they may just be testing a product so don't use it when calculating the average user decrease per month, which in this example is 3.1%. So now you want to graph the results to visualize the analysis. So in this first graph, one thing to point out is that there is a leveling off during the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th months, then another significant drop in users during the 11th month. This would be a good area to focus on. What caused the leveling off and subsequent drop off? So then the second graph, you can better visualize each cohort and the associated monthly decrease. Ideally, as time goes by, the decrease gets smaller and smaller. That is, latter cohorts should be retaining users better than earlier cohorts due to having a better understanding of user needs and doing a better job with customer service, etc. For the most part, this is true in this example, as May, June, and July, 
and August have much higher customer retention through the fourth month. One anomaly to take note of is January 2012, and those users who purchased that month had an unusually high retention compared to the surrounding months. What happened that month to cause that? And in the third graph, you can better visualize the changes from cohort to cohort. So next, since we know the average decrease per month, 3.1%, we can begin to put a forecast together. I went ahead and forecasted out for two years. So you can see the graph here that shows the percentage of users left. Keep in mind this does not take new users into account. Again, you can see ups and downs and any anomalies. You can then piece together this info with any changes in your product or perhaps new competitors entering the market to find correlations in order to get a better sense of why such changes occurred. Finally, always remember that when you're looking at cohorts to make sure that the data itself can be leveraged in some actionable way. Don't build cohorts for the sake of cohorts, in other words. Make sure that the data can be used to have a positive impact on your product or service. Thank you.